welcome back to Turntable Guy. And on the bench today, we have something uh, pretty neat. And I got a little story behind this one. This is an Akai AP-001C. This is a very, very early, early turntable by Akai. Um, it is a suspended... Actually, the whole chassis is suspended. Um, belt drive, semi-automatic. I believe it's semi-automatic. Or is it manual? Oh, you know what? This one might be a manual. Yeah, I think it is. Um, this one, I actually saw on um, Facebook Marketplace. And uh, I just uh, happened to... Uh, I didn't need it, but uh, I sent it over to uh, one of the gentlemen in our vinyl group uh, here in the city. And uh, I said, uh, you should go pick this up. And it was listed for $15. Needs a belt and needs a stylus. Um, so he went and got it and, uh, here it is. It's in for service. Um, he has already ordered a brand new, uh, Audio-Technica AT VM 95C cartridge for it. And this one is included with the head shell. All right. We're going to check, um, alignment on this and make sure that it's uh, the correct overhang for this turntable. So that's already purchased and we got an issue here under this uh, this collar um, so it needs a belt and um, the whole thing with this one is uh, we're gonna have to service it to a certain cost level because uh, the gentleman has already sold it and I got to try and keep the price at a certain level so that uh, you know he's making a little bit of money on it and uh, I'm making a little bit of money on it and it gets serviced uh, so the new owner has a properly functioning turntable now one of the things I've noticed right away is the spindle motor, or not the spindle motor, the spindle here is completely seized. Um, it's not turning in the bearing. Uh, it's turning because this nut is loose. So we're going to have to service this bearing. Uh, the motor we will not be servicing. Uh, I have turned it on. It is spinning correctly. Um, he has applied a couple drops of oil. I'll probably give it just a quick cleaning, make sure it's good. The uh, spindle itself here, the pulley, is filthy. It's uh, had a belt die on it, so we're going to clean that. We're going to do the spindle motor, and we're going to set up the turntable, and we're going to... Uh, I've got a belt on order. There's no belt for it, but I'm just going to put a test belt on it just to make sure that it, uh, it's spinning correctly and we have good speed because this is a synchronous AC motor, and as you know, you can't adjust speed on those. Um, unless there's some kind of intricate pulley system uh, where you can vary the uh, circumference of the pulley here to change speed um, for pitch. But uh, this one does not have that, so basically it's down to the motor um, and the belt. Okay, so uh, anyway, like I mentioned, uh, it, I guess it's not a semi-automatic because uh, there's no auto-return gears here. But we're going to have to get at that uh, spindle. Um, pretty simple turntable, something else that needs to be done. Uh, this arm, the clamp here is completely loose. So we're going to have a look at that. The cueing itself is okay. It's dropping a little hard. We're going to see how difficult it is. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to do a few things here extra and not charge for them. So, um, cause I'm in, I'm getting a video out of it. So, you know, fair is fair. Okay. Let us begin. So we're not even going to even test it. We're going to get right at it. And we're going to take this platter off again. It's a good, heavy platter. Um, it's fairly clean. It sits very deep uh, in, in the turntable. And uh, when you look at the table from the front, it's really nice because the platter is almost uh, uh, level with the plinth. So it's, it's pretty sharp looking. All right, so we are going to remove... Counterweight. This is already off. And uh, we'll get it flipped over. Uh, this also needs a set of RCA cables. That's a spring NSA. Uh, so this one's got uh, RCA jacks and a ground connector there. So I'm going to get a uh, set of cables and uh, get a ground cable for them. You can use anything for a ground cable. speaker wire, anything that you have. 
Okay, now to remove this, if I remember correctly, I think what we need to do is we have to slide, yes, we need to slide these out of the way. And that will remove. And if you look in here, the base is just a big empty cavern, right? And as you can see, these three posts here, actually there's four of them, they sit on these springs. Really simple system. There's four springs. All right. So here's our big motor. Like I said, he has lubricated it. Uh, I'm just going to pull it out just to have a quick look at it. Um, we need to get the spindle out because I think we're going to have to get some heat on it. We'll do that after we get the base back on. Just going to check that everything's looking okay down here um, and how difficult it is to maybe get a little bit. Oh, it's going to be really simple, I think. Okay, that's the... Uh... Now, what is this? Maybe this is a semi-automatic. This looks like a, a sensor here. This is an auto lift. All right, what now? You know, once once we get this thing all done, we'll uh, we'll give it a test and see what's going on with it. Um, okay. This is undoubtedly, yeah. Okay. Why don't we Why don't we do this? The first thing we're going to deal with, right here, underneath this arm, is our queuing. So, let's see how difficult that is to release. It's probably going to come out the top. Yeah, it definitely is. Okay, I am going to release this here. Just to get it out of the way. And there we go. That was excellent. So it's definitely worth servicing that. You know, we've got the ability to do it right here. We have an E-clip here. Take that out. And there is um, silicone grease at the bottom here. So it's ha it has leaked out after, you know, 50 or so years. So we're just going to remove that. We're going to take out our spring. And my guess is that this should come out through the top. And it does. There it is. So here's your, your queuing lift, lift arm, okay? So as you can see, there is no grease left on here. These two areas here and here should have silicone grease in them. So we're going to do that. And what we'll do first is we'll just clean off the old grease. It's not 100% necessary to do that, to clean the old stuff off. It's just silicone grease. Oops. I guess we could have taken that off. Ah, there's a screw here. Ah, never mind. We'll tighten that up when we, uh, when we put it back. So there's a little retention screw here. It came right off when I pulled on it. Just tighten that there. It's probably a little bit of height adjustment too for when you want to set the arm height for your queuing. All right, so that's uh, that's that clean. And I suppose we can just run the Q-tip down the hole here. Not too much cotton on there. There, just to take off any extra. It doesn't matter because it's, it's the same product that's going in that was 
that was on there originally. All right, so what you want to do is get a little bit of uh, what I'm using here is a silicone damping fluid. This is 300,000 CST. You can also use 500,000 CST. It's a little bit thicker. And you just want to fill this cavity up here. There and there. Okay. Just like that. And gravity will do the rest. Okay, so when you want to reach in from behind again, drop this in the hole. Hard to work upside down. I can't do it. zoom out. Can you see that there? Close enough. There we go. Okay, that's it. So we got fresh silicone grease. And now we'll put our spring back on. And our clip. Be very careful when there's a spring underneath the E-clip because it will send it across the room and I guarantee you you will never see it again you got to hold it while you're snapping it into place there we go and now we can put this back on some kind of composite plastic. There we go. So when we move the lever, it will pull the arm up and down. Okay, good. So that's done. Next, let's do our spindle. How's your view? Right there. One screw. Phillips. It's been off before. It's stripped. And this is moving around, which is doubly bad. Okay, put that aside for safekeeping. We're going to have to go above again. Like I said, this... Ooh, yeah, the spindle does not want to come out of the uh, bearing has nothing to do with the nut either. I 
Okay, I'm going to try a little bit of WD-40. I'm let that soak. I don't want to put heat on it yet. I may have to heat it up. But I can't even pull it out of the body because to get the nut out, I have to get the axle out of the bearing. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on it from underneath. And the screwdriver, just see. That is not moving. Okay, um, I'm going to pause here. So I did manage to remove that nut, and like I thought, it would not come out. I just want to show you this. So I retightened the uh, the bearing all the way down, so this nut is tight. So I just want to show you, this does not turn at all. It is totally, completely, oh, my nut's getting loose again. So um, I don't want to force it, so we're going to try some heat. heat up the bottom. got to be careful because there's wires under here and I don't want to melt them. Okay, let's see if that moves at all. Now, yep, it's moving a little bit. I'm going to try and heat it from the side while I'm, while I'm pulling. I know it's not going to be easy to see. Can you kind of see that? Yeah, you can there from there. So I'll heat it from the back side. Let's see if I can pull it. I am concerned about these wires. Oh, 
Holy moly. I could put pliers on this, but we'll just keep eating it. It is getting hot on the top side too. Here it comes. It's getting very hot. Ah, got it. Holy moly. That was the most stubborn spindle I have ever had to deal with. But, perseverant, wow, it still doesn't want to come out. Holy crap. Come on, baby. It's very hot, too. Oh. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. Look at that, eh? And it doesn't probably show very well on the on camera but this is glue right the grease has turned to glue but if you do have a bearing that is um stuck like that heat is your friend don't yank on it and don't if i mean if it comes down to it you can put some pliers on here maybe wrap them you know with electrical tape or cloth or something to try to avoid marring this the top part of the spindle here and it'll help you give it a little bit more grip, but just keep heating it. And you know, I mean, you need you need good heat, right? And uh, who this stinks so bad now. Anyway, it's out. It is out, out, out. We really don't need to remove this anymore. I can do the work from the top. There's a ball bearing in there. Excuse my head. Let's see if we can get that out. It's probably stuck in there. Yeah, it's not going to move yet. Um, because this was so bad, um, alcohol is just not going to do it alone. So we're going to WD-40 this sucker. And uh, not only that, I'm going to let it sit for five to 10 minutes, really let it activate. So while that's sitting, I'm going to pause and, uh, I'll be back for the rest of it. So I've soaked, uh, this uh, paper towel with a little bit of WD-40 and I'm just going to let it sit around the axle just to soften the grease and then we'll clean it with alcohol which that, that's it for a few minutes. Uh, the WD-40 has been in there for a little bit now. I'm just going to absorb some of it out. I'm just wondering if that ball bearing will ever move again. It may be glued to the bottom. Excuse my head. Yeah, I'm not going to pick at it any more than that. Just want to see if it would move. Clean the bearing well out with uh, some alcohol. Make sure it's good and clean. And while we have everything out here, I don't know what size this is. It's a seven sixteenth. Yeah, it's probably a twelve millimeter. Tighten that really good. Mm. 
All right, now, I'm just gonna clean off our axle. Maybe a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel for the final cleaning. WD-40 did uh, remove the remaining grease. Still dirty though. There's a ring at the top here. Where the, uh, where the grease kind of died there. All right, let's just see how it is now. No grease, I'm just going to gently just put it in. Hmm. It's tight. Hopefully it's it's not uh, damaged in any way. I'm probably going to use a little bit of a thicker oil for this one. Just because... I'm just wondering if the tolerances have been damaged. You can hear my sump pump going in the background. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to use a, a 80W90 Hypoid gear oil for this one. I'm going to make sure it has got plenty of lubrication. Just because of what happened to the spindle, right? Don't worry about overfilling it. There's a hole down there that will uh, release any pressures. And uh, yeah, this is not good. Want to try something? I'm hoping it's not damaged. Seems okay here. Seems perfectly fine. There we go. Could be I had the uh, nut too tight. Shouldn't affect how it performs though. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Huh. It's going in nicely. I don't think you can over tighten this nut. Seems to put pressure on the spindle. It's got to be tight, right? 
Well, it feels fine now. You do not want it spinning. You just want the axle spinning in the bearing. And that's what we have. All right, this bearing's good. I'm not sure if I over tightened that nut before and if it was difficult to get this axle in, but it's perfectly good now. It's spinning nicely. And now we put the platter on. Instead of the whole thing spinning, it's dead quiet. That's a lovely lubricated bearing there. Okay. All right, we need to put the uh, screw back on. And the underneath part here. And uh, that was a toughie. Definitely the most seized spindle bearing I've ever come across. Okay, you put your retaining screw back in. Don't over tighten this. Don't strip this screw. Just snug, that's it. All right, so that's a couple things done here. We are just going to uh, pull the motor up and out because I definitely want to look. Um, let me see if I can get a drop of oil into that bottom bearing. But anyway. Got here three screws, looks like. Oh no, they're just clips. One. Two. Three. So I should be able to pull this motor through now. And what else is on here? Oh, washers. Just want to flip it up. Yeah, that is freaking disgusting. You seeing that? That's really horrifying. Um, I think I'm going to remove it and clean it. I'm going to soak it in some uh, WD-40. Perfect. And there's the oil the gentleman applied. You can see it's well lubricated there. That's good. So to clean this, um, that's belt residue. It's really bad. The first thing I do is I'm going to soak this um, in some WD-40 as well. And then we'll clean it with alcohol. And then we'll turn on the motor and uh, run a Q-tip up and down it to, to clean it uh, for final cleaning. But uh, that's all I want to do. I wanted to get that clean. Make sure the motor is clean here, the upper bearing. I'll see if I can get a couple drops in the in the bottom bearing, um, but I'm not taking the motor apart. So, um, okay, so I'll I'll be right back. I'm gonna I'm gonna soak and and clean this uh, this pulley. So this has been soaking for a little while, and you can see what's coming off of this thing. It's just uh, belt death. It's horrible. It, it doesn't stop. I let the uh, I let the pulley soak a little bit. We'll keep cleaning. We'll be back. Okay, so after lots of WD-40 and lots of uh, alcohol scrubbing, we have a nice clean pulley now. So that can go back on the motor. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna try and get a couple drops into that lower bearing. I'm just gonna use my little oiling spout here. And uh, one, two drops, that's it. 
I'm not going to be taking the motor apart, like I said. Okay, so we can put our pulley back on now. And then we can put our motor back in. You have to adjust the height of the pulley. When you put the belt on, you can do it from the top. Okay, so we had... Uh, Washers. Clips. Okay, one more thing to do down here is the armrest. It was, uh, what is it? It's right here. And I don't think this is the correct nut for it. Must have been the original nut for it, or maybe not. Maybe there is no original nut for it. Yeah, yep, bastard. Oh, this is the original nut for it. I think it's kind of threading. Hmm, is it threading? Let me look through my uh, parts bin here. See if I can find something else. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, I found a nut that, that fit. Uh, the threads were a little stripped. So, yeah, just a little bit uh, difficult to get it super tight. And straight, this is straight here. So I can't get a nut driver in there because it's too narrow, but that's that's not going anywhere. So that's done. Okay, I think we are done with the bottom of this turntable. And really, I think we're done with the with the servicing. Um, let me get the base back on. I'll do that off camera. And uh, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to put a test belt on it. I think it's a 23.6. I'll just pull one off of my SL23 and uh, see what kind of speed we're doing. Okay, before putting any new belt on an old turntable, make sure you clean the inner ring here to remove any belt death, the old belt and greases, oils, whatever. Just get it off anywhere where the belt touches the platter here, okay? Last thing you wanna do is contaminate a fresh belt. Now, This uh, belt off my SL23 is a 23.6 inch belt. I think it's a little tight. I'm not sure. It feels just a little, little too much. That's a, I think it's a little too tight. So it's probably not the right size belt. So 
let's not judge this turntable yet until we have a correct belt for it. This is just, you know, a test to see how we're doing as far as spinning goes. Yeah, it's way too tight. This belt is not for this turntable. Okay, I'm not even going to do this. Hang on. I think I have a little bit of a looser belt I can put on here. So 23.6 is not the belt. I'd rather put on uh, an extremely loose belt than something that tight. You're going to yank on the motor pulley. You're going to cause damage to the top bearing. And that's not good. Okay, I have this old belt that I keep around. I'm not sure what size it is, um, but it is definitely a bigger size belt. And yeah, yeah, I can tell already that it's a little better. It's a, it's definitely loose. There's no doubt about it. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to wait for the belt to come in from the supplier. Let's get this one wrapped around here for now. Just make sure we're spinning good. Actually, it's not not that bad. It's, it is loose though. Okay, first time we're going to plug this in, just to see if we got motor spinach, and we do. Excellent. Off. On. So 25, 30, 17. That bolt is definitely too loose. Yeah, there's not going to be a lot of testing we can do right now. I just don't have the correct belt for it. This, uh, this adjuster is way out. Let's go leave it there for now, see what happens. It's on the 33 pulley. Let's see what kind of speed we're holding. Ah. It's actually pretty good if just a titch small, uh, slow. Well, it's a little big, but it's uh, a little slow. I mean, if it tightens up, you probably get a little more speed out of it. And this, like I said, this needs adjustment. So well, that should be 45. It's not on the 45. I'm not sure if that pulley needs to come up or if this adjuster needs to be adjusted. It's plastic. It doesn't look like there's a lot of adjustment. I think our pulley's too low. And I put it back where it was, but it, it looks like it's way too low. That's your four, that's your 45 height. The 33 should be there. So this pulley needs to be in the middle of where the belt rides. Let's see if we can adjust it. Not a lot of room here. I mean, I can't even get my screwdriver in there. I mm, can a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to go there, see how, how that works. Hopefully it's not too high. Okay. Let's try that. All right. Belt's a little high. At least I'm getting 33 45 now. Well, the mystery is we're just going to have to wait for the correct belt to come in. Sorry, can't do a real speed test or anything here. Um, but until I have the correct belt, that's just going to have to wait.
So, and I didn't tighten my screw enough, so that's going to be adjusted anyway. So, okay. Our next order of business and our last order of business here is going to be, I'm going to bring you down to show you this one. There we go. Okay. Can you see inside of there? What if I put some light on the situation? Do you see inside that uh, collar? That's totally corroded. That's going to make poor contact. So I'm going to show you how to clean that. Hang on, I'm going to put you. I'm going to pause before I put you back up. Just hang on a sec. All right, for this, you definitely want some deoxit. You want something that's going to eat the corrosion and just spray it liberally in there. Let it do its job. It uh, it will uh, dissolve the corrosion. And you can. Uh, spill up any more or pick up any of the spillage and just uh, start working it. Q-tip's fine. If it's really, really bad, you can use a little uh, light sandpaper. And uh, while you're in there, clean the gold contacts on the four pins. See how that's changed color. It's just uh, aluminum oxide coming off. All right, let's see if our head shell goes in any better. It's still a little tight, but it is better. Yeah, much better. Once you insert the head shell a couple times, you'll scrape off what, what's uh, remaining. Get a nice connection. All right. So I said that, uh, ooh, I've got the uh, light on, I'm going to turn that off. I said that we would uh, check the uh, service manual for this. So let me download that. I'm going to see what the overhang is on this turntable. Okay, I have checked the service manual. And the overhang for this turntable and cartridge is 15 millimeters. So what that means is the stylus point, which is right there, it's kind of hard to see has to be 15 millimeters from the center of the center spindle, okay? Now, um, this is really difficult to do. Uh, I think it's a little bit more than that. So it's about there. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's about 17 or 18 right now. That's 15, yeah, it's about 17. So this cartridge has to come back about two millimeters for it to be the correct overhang for this turntable. All right, so that's how that's done. And really, that is all we can do right now. I have adjusted the pulley. I downloaded the service manual, and the pulley height is supposed to be, uh, the top of the pulley is supposed to be just below the top of the speed changer here. So I've got that adjusted. Um, and now it's just a matter of uh, waiting for a belt to come in. So not the most satisfying end of a video, but we did a lot to this. Um, and most importantly, we freed up the seized uh, center spindle here, which was a complete mess. Um, we gave the motor a little bit of a lubrication. Uh, and again, we also cleaned this pulley, which was absolutely filthy. So a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of this and that. Um, all it needs is a pair of cables, a ground cable, and uh, it's going to be good to go. Anyway, that is the Akai AP001C. Uh, it is actually an auto stop turntable. So when this cartridge reaches the end of the record, it will stop. Whether it lifts or not, I have no clue. I haven't got that far yet in the service manual. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.